Welcome back. And um, we've got some action live and direct. So come and have a look. So we're in the Caribbean. It's called, if you zoom out, it's called the Caribbean. But I think um, it's otherwise known as Cuba as well. So huge flotilla attacked me this morning from the Caribbean around here. So um, Jonathan, where my aeroplanes are, seven aeroplanes and a couple of boats off my north coast. Um, five, five convoys full of um, all sorts of units like um, artillery, troops, tanks, all sorts um, were trying to land on my shore. They were they were unpacking for about four and a half hours it takes. And um, my big stack up here was right near them. So I was able to plough... Um, I had, I had like they were split up so two stacks of five boats plow them into them um and start taking them out and then i was able to bring these planes in and uh, patrol above them and they just didn't stand a chance I, I did take a bit of damage to my boats though um you can see the battleships here on sort of two-thirds health three battleships so i think he must have sent some some ships as well there was one battleship left um when i got to look at it but yeah, that, that that happened very early morning UK time. And then um, throughout the morning while I was out um, doing my job, uh, I was able to just, yeah, rely on my boats taking them out and, and, and the aircraft for, for when I next checked in, they were all gone. So thank goodness me, because if they'd landed, even one convoy, they'd have wreaked absolute havoc in my in my homeland, even though I've got some good defence here. Um, and, and of course I had the planes as, as defence and that's always been the plan to defend the homelands with a big old stack of planes so yeah it's become really important to have like a really good air force and navy now taking the fight to them um, this stack of planes has been attacking me um, when I last looked they had six planes they've now got three and um, but I think they probably had a lot more than that as well it might have been their big stack um, they're not really doing any damage. I've got three cruisers in there quite deliberately from um, planning very early on to have a little bit of everything. They've got 7.2 attack against air, um, so they're doing really nicely. Um, the the aeroplanes are just bouncing off really, and actually I'd, I'd just come over to attack them while they're refueling. I'll attack them in 45 seconds. How good is that? So we'll see how much damage... Um, a ship attack does on grounded planes. I don't know if the tank and the artillery will take the damage instead. But we've got artillery on either side. Um, park my boats in the middle. And the... I'm thinking maybe the battleship has the biggest range. Attack range 70 on the battleship. Because you've got different rings I'm seeing, Jonathan. The outer yeah. ring is, is quite quite wide and it does reach to Kingston um, which is uh, like a southeast little island in, in the Caribbean and um, the inner ring I think that's going to be, so that's 70 attack range 50 for the cruisers then attack range 20 for the destroyers yeah, so it's the, it's the battleships that have this enormous range um, and they've got 2.7 attack against all the land troops, uh, 1.4 against planes, so they probably won't do much damage, um, 7.2 against boats. So anyway, uh, there's not a lot that can beat this stack. Um, you'd have to have a big old stack of ships and and some uh, to beat these boys. So have we attacked? Yes, we've attacked. So what's the result? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're pretty much almost dead, the planes. They were on about six life. Now they're on three. You can watch back to see how much that took off. Um, yeah, chipped a little bit off the artillery. Tiny bit off the tank. So um, the tank's well defended. But yeah, um, moving some more boats up um, to this area to, to shell Montego Bay. So um, got another battleship and uh, what's that one? A destroyer? Battleship and destroyer. So no air defense for them. And then I've got um, Battleship and a Sub coming up. And I'm just trying to make another cruiser here. And that's the action up in the north. So let's have a catch up with Jonathan and see what's been occurring. Hello. Um, yeah, I've pretty much taken North Argentina now. And I'm considering who my next target will be. Um, I've got a mixture of a bunch of troops, not really sure what I'm specialising in, but I have got some attack bombers, 
and some tactical bombers now. Made some mechanized infantry along with uh, a wide variety of tanks. Um, and yeah, I'm just cleaning up um, some of the Chilean provinces that... Um, uh, who was he? North Argentina took. And yeah, once I've done that, I could move on to South Brazil. Or there may be some Goyas territory left to take. Or I may just um, go straight on into uh, Sao Paulo. Yeah. Not going for South Argentina yet? Oh. Well, he, he, he was the guy... Was was South Argentina the um, guy who's gone to the Falklands? It is, yeah. He asked us to let him have South Argentina, but he's not attacked. So... Oh, and there we are. North Brazil is in the Falklands. So North Brazil originally started... Uh, up here, surrendered um, and fled around the coast all the way down to the Falkland Islands and has settled there. He's asked us as part of the deal to give him South Argentina as well. I don't know if I 100% agreed to that. I think I uh, was more like, yeah, sure, you can go to the Falklands, but I don't know, I'll have to read the legal text on that one. But if we finish taking over this island and he's not even stepped foot into South Argentina, I think we'll be very justified to just go in and take it. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It would be a real possibility if it's not in the terms and conditions. Yeah, I mean, I'll get a lawyer on it and see what we say. Um mm. Know a lawyer or two. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, well anyway, we can take the rest of the island. Um and we're waiting for, for Tim as well. He'll be with us um, shortly, I'm sure. He's having his tea. I'll give you an update on Goyas. So they're tricky dickies. And I've um they've been going around me and, and land grabbing. Oh, and something weird happened with this. This was Goyas. In the middle, can um you can see like um East Amazonas have three provinces now, and then um North Brazil have a province. <laughs> it's the yellow one right in the middle of South America. They um Goyas had them, but basically what's happened is that their morale has gone so low that the um the provinces have flipped someone else. Kind of like what happened over here with um, with me and you, um, Jonathan. Oh, is is that what happens? Because I, I noticed yeah. before it says there's a chance of an uprising, but it just gives oh. it to a random player, does it? Well, no, I think it, it, it gives it to maybe who previously owned it, because that looks like it's, um, it's the East Amazonas Territory. So maybe it gives it to whoever had the highest morale last or something or or whoever's whoever whoever was closest and had the highest morale. Maybe someone knows and you can let us know in the comments. Anyway, um hoovering through Goyas now. Uh, they they we had a big battle here basically in um Cuyaba. Cuyaba. Yeah, where my artillery are and where these uh, these tanks are. I'd I had um, a fairly large stack that got quite badly wounded. Here, here's one. Um, where's the other? Anyway, took a bit, a bit of a hit on a big stack uh, that I didn't expect. Yeah, they they went for me, but luckily I had my um my artillery. Oh, there they are. So yeah, th this this army I basically got a tank, two infantry, two artillery, a tank destroyer, and an air defense. So it's a pretty ragtag crew now, with one of everything. Um, yeah, they're really badly injured, so they're going to have to rest up. Maybe they can be like the home guard or something. And then I've got these guys who've got a bit more life. They they were backing them up and just like hammering, hammering the... Um, the Goyas army from a distance with artillery. Artillery is really good, Jonathan, but you're building something better. I'm building a railway gun. Yeah, which is, is a bit ridiculous looking. Um, oh. But yeah, you've got to have a secret lab to build it. Oh. Quite a lot of resources. Um, 
Well, I didn't... Were we talking about this after the episode yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were. So, Thinks like... So. Yeah, they've, they've got a lot of attack and not a lot of defense, and they're quite slow, but they're very good at bombarding cities. They do a lot of damage. So I'm going to... Um, I hadn't, a few of those. I hadn't realized you need a secret lab. I'm going to have to build a secret lab. Ooh, what are you building? Uh, well, I'm researching um, railroad gun, but I've still got 11 and a half hours left. And um, I, I want it as a bit of a defense. So if I'd had a railroad gun on one of my cities when this um, big attack was happening, then yeah, I'd, I'd have had a bit of defense and, and hit have papped away at them. And I want to use it as a bit of an offensive weapon as well. So I think it's a good big gun to have. So I'm going to build a secret lab in Panama, but don't tell anyone. Have I got enough resources? No, I need food. So I need 700 food. I've got everything else. And um, 384. 700. So I need 415 food. Ah, oh, That should tick up in no time. For, but can I buy it? Mm, it's expensive to buy. I'll just wait for it to to come in. I would buy it, but I'm a bit low on cash because I just bought a load of other stuff. Um, don't tell anyone, Jonathan. Just between me and you, oil's pretty cheap on the uh, the open market. Have you noticed? I have not. Has there been another crash? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the, I mean. It's it's strange because that's one of the things that I do run out of. And I, do you run out of oil? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So maybe I, I mean I don't know why it's a glut for everyone else. Maybe they're mm. building units that don't require it, or it must be hoarding it. Maybe they just need other resources. UK's taken a bit of a hit from Spain, Belgium. I think they've had a morale hit. I'm just looking elsewhere in the in the world. I'm sure the UK had more land in France, but some of the provinces have flipped. Spain's still active. Some big old players. So Egypt's pretty big. Algeria. Oof. Afghanistan. No, they're well, they're Iraq. Core. Cool. Iraq has really spread out. Who are they chipping into? Volga Perm, whoever they are. Maybe. We're going to have to start working out who's in what alliance because surely all these guys are in the same alliance because they're not chipping into each other. It looks like Central Russia had a massive um, quick initial start but does seem to have slowed down now which is a bit of a relief to be honest with you. North Ural looks like they're they're cracking on. And who's up here? West Yakutia. West Yakutia. Yeah, West Yakutia is getting in there. Manchukuko. However you say that. And you're there in a fifth place. Doing pretty well. Fifth, am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. and um, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed, but just to the east of Australia now, I've got my little boat, my little troop. And we're papping away at these islands. So um, the boat's here. I've upgraded it as well while we've, we're in transit. So it's got 2.7 attack. Um, it's a cruiser. So it's 9.9 .9 defense against air. And um, just papping away at these guys. So they're on, yeah, nearly one bar of health left. Um, so by the time my, yeah, by the time my, my guy comes, which is 14 hours... Uh, for the inf one infantry unit to arrive. There he is, little hero, just about half health. Um, level one. It's going to just drop in there and take over these islands one by one. And um, then we'll go on to these ones, I guess. Just take over all these little islands. And um, it's probably little islands that no one would ever bother trying to, to take over because they're too much effort. But there's a load of them. Cool, look at that. I'd quite fancy having Hawaii. So we'll have to see how long it takes to get through all these and up up here and along here. But there are loads and loads of islands to take over. And I've um, got a couple of sets under my belt already. 
So, um, so that's good. Now, um, in terms of what I'm researching, uh, in the comments, someone recommended. Um, so I'm, I'm researching the flying flying bomb, but someone recommended the rocket fighter. Said they're good at aeroplane uh, attacking other aeroplanes. And if you look at the um, the level one rocket fighter, it's got twenty attack against other planes, but its defense is awful, and it's got reasonable attack against troops five point four, but everything else is awful. So I'm just hedging my bets and making sure I'm not going to be a million miles away from researching that if I need to. And um, ooh, at the very bottom right hand corner of the secret research tab is the nuclear rocket. God, it costs a lot. Nuclear bomber. Atomic bomb. So I, d I don't know what happens. I don't know if I'll go, go down that route. But um, I think quite negative things can happen if you drop a a nuke. I don't know in this game though. What do you think? Um, probably yeah, more of the uprising stuff. Like your provinces may just be lost to whoever had them last, or however it works. Oh yeah, they um, could just disappear. Yeah, but I don't really have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's worth just giving it a shot. Yeah, yeah, it could be quite dangerous. We'll have to have a think about that one. Okay, sure. So anyway, but, you know, researching the flying bomb, giving myself the option um, to go for some of these rockets. What's the... Oh, it's, it's only got two levels, the rocket fighter. Um, goes up to 32 attack against planes. Whoa, whoa. Cool. Okay, well, we'll have to see where that can fly from whether it's a base or it could could fly from um, an aircraft carrier. Jonathan, I've been thinking once we've taken over this island, we're going to need serious air and sea defence. We're going to need air defence in the north, um, kind of in between me and Tim where we started. Um, we're going to need a big stack up there of air defence. We're going to need a big stack in the east where... Af where South America kind of points towards Africa on that tip, and then we'll need um, we'll we'll need um, a big stack in the south, um, and possibly one in the middle. So we'll need forty planes just to provide us some basic defence, possibly, and then we'll need to think about um, stacks of ships um, to yeah. defend our coast, or we could say, well, you know, if we get attacked, we get attacked, and and just send everything we've got. Um, you know, somewhere else and just leave it defenceless. So we'll have to have a think about what we do. Um, have you had uh, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, the, I mean, there are some strategic points where we're likely to get an incursion. and One of those is on the east and considering like um, home cities, we, we, we've got to have um, naval defences for where we're exposed on our home cities. Like with Tim, he's, he's got um, Manchurian, and Barakwamisto, uh, Par Paramaribo, Param that's like right on the coast, and a few of my cities are too. So um, yeah. in terms of air defences, we'll just need a good network of um, airfields, won't we? Um, I was wondering if, if you um, upgrade those, does it increase the range? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't think so, because I think it's down to the, the range that the... Um, that the planes have but i think it's to do with re refueling time so it takes half an hour yeah. to refuel each time half an and, hour oh that's pretty and uh, but yeah. so one thing you might not know jonathan is is when a plane goes from one air air airstrip to another it has to stop at that airstrip and refuel and so if you're flying your planes from one end of the continent to the other that could take like eight hours or something and and it's just hopping in between airports refueling for half an hour spending a few minutes going to the next one refueling for half an hour and so on and so i think if you upgrade the airports it's going to make the refuel quicker that's my theory so that's why i think we need defensive stacks in each area because to send one to another area would take a very long time mm. so that's something yeah, to maybe, think about maybe artillery 
on some of the coastal cities would be a good idea too. Yeah, I think so. artillery on some of our coastal home cities would be really good. And um, I've, I've, I've always had art, a, a good old artillery stack on Panama. Um, I've got two there now, two artillery, but I, um, I did have uh, four because I've, I've split them off now. So I'll, I'll build that back up again, but with, with rail, rail guns as well and, um, and more, more ship defense. Still got my uh, sub patrolling. But he's got two hours left until I have to recharge his patrol. I've been building air strips everywhere, so you should find good connectivity through my land. Um, maybe have one here or here. But I will be testing the, the connectivity as well. And the way you do that is you just, like I said before, get um, grab a plane anywhere, doesn't matter where, set patrol mode and then just hover it around places and see where it can go. A um, little bit of trouble getting th through the end of Goyas, but I'm still taking the territory, so that's fine. And yeah, I pretty much get everywhere in Tim's part, apart from on his very front line. And um, for you, for you, I can't get anywhere near your new territories that you built in. Um, North Argentina. It's a bit of a cut-off point there. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, like otherwise we've got great, really nice coverage. Um, so that's good. Let's see how the attack's going in the Canary Islands. Let's see what's occurring. Okay, I think we've. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. He's moving his planes away. He's he's realised that they're they're lost. They're a forlorn hope. So I could just bring this ship around. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, he's nearly in, in range. So I'll just bring him around to there. 25 minutes. Um, his aeroplanes will be sandwiched in between my two stacks and have nowhere to go. Um, they basically hit convoy mode and gone into a vehicle and, and then he's just trying to run them away, I guess. I've only got three health, so might be a bit pointless but yeah and uh, in the meantime just cracking into this stack so I'm ten, 10 minutes away from the next attack and um, yeah more boats coming so that's fine we'll um, yeah he, he won't be able to really b rebuild quicker than I'm destroying his stuff I don't think but I, I could do with Tim sending like a troop over or something but oh do you know what I've done? I've totally okay. forgotten. I've researched. Okay, this is exactly what it's for. I've researched militia. Now, you might ask me why. Yeah, <laughs> why have you done that? They seem a bit pointless to me. <laughs> because at the moment, where's my closest barracks? At the moment, my closest barracks is Puerta Inerida. And you know I've got the high command and I've got this build queue. So I've stacked up a load of builds. But it, it's pointless anyway because um, it's taking me 21 hours to, to build each motorised infantry. And I kind of need like a little pap of about, you know, one or two or three to send in the Caribbean. Um, and militia take 45 minutes to build. They don't need to have any strength whatsoever because my ships are, are destroying the enemy. They just need to walk in and take the province. So that's why I've built the militia. And I think what I did was build a barracks here. No. Yeah, well, a barracks takes 30 minutes to build. Barracks here in Panama? Yeah, I've got a barracks in Panama, but we're building motorised. And then a couple of artillery. Um, Medellin, we're building recruiting station 11 hours. Mm, it's a bit recruiting station there. It's a bit inconvenient actually to build any militia anywhere. Because it will involve stopping building something else. Hmm. Probably best to just churn out on, on your cities closest to the front line. Wherever that may be. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to work out where I can pump out a couple of militia. It might just be that the next 
motorized infantry goes to the kinetic. Mm. Maybe I can just do it with this one troop I'm sending over. I've got one troop going over. It'll be 13 hours, which is a crazy long time. Maybe I can just do it with that one troop. That'll take a very, very long time. It just gives him a very long time to then respond. Okay, I'll work out how I can get another troop or two over there. Have I got any in this stack? None there. Oh, I've got one here that I'm sending over. Send you up here. Right, you go for that one. Okay, I've got a couple of troops anyway I'm sending over. They'll work it out between them, I'm sure. And I've got a troop here. Hmm. Anyway, let's have a look at what we're building. So, um, in terms of... Yeah, here's the build queue. Recruiting station, recruiting station, propaganda office, level 4 industry on oil. Uh, my main oil city. Level 2 industry on um, rare materials, because I've got so many, but I thought there's going to get a time where I'll need more, surely. Um, level 2 industry on a minor steel province. I don't know why I did that, but I could do with a level 4 industry on my main steel city, because we just... Ah, okay, but I need a bit more oil. 2,850. So we, we're just sucking through resources at the minute. Um, oh yeah, and I was waiting for more money to build up before I buy more oil. Okay. Um, what sort of stuff are you building in your cities in, in terms of buildings? Oh, yeah, I've been focusing a lot more on industry. Um, I built a couple of bunkers as well. Cool. And I was uh, preempting an attack from North Argentina. Oh, but, uh, that could be a good idea focused. for our home cities. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if these affect morale. Um, no. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ooh, you're uh, actually building a railroad gun. Three days? Three days, is it? Crikey. Did you realise that? Uh, no. Wow. Ooh. And how slow are they? Oh. Let's have a look at their speed. So their... Oh, their speed isn't too bad. It's like 13 in mountains or, you know, like 19 in hills, 19 forests, but sort of uh, 32 on normal terrain, flat terrain, plains. I don't really know what that, what that means, though. Um, well, do you remember North, North Argentina's stack going through the mountains? Their big stack of 12. They were travelling at 9. Um, and they put speed on and went at 12. So it's very slow. It is slow. And when you're moving in enemy territory, um, you're at 50% of the speed. So yeah. it, it's pretty slow, but it's not so slow that they're not moving. So they, they will get, they'll get around. And. Yeah. And if you want them to get anywhere fast, you could shove them off into the into the water and transport them by water, I guess. But then you you'll want them to land pretty much where where they're going to be attacking. So they'll be the slow army that sort of marches up as the the rest of your army ca keeps calm and carry on. Um, ooh. So ooh, you started building that quickly. That's a good job. I'm going to have to, with that in mind, it makes sense to, to to make them on a coastal city or, oh my god, do you know what I've just thought? You know all these little islands I've been making? Um, yeah. I could construct the rail gun on one of these islands and then ship them straight into the water and send them to where they're going. But then water travel's not very fast, is it? Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe it's, just it's, it's risky too, like, if you come across a boat and lose one of these guns, it's it's a lot. Ooh. It's, yeah, three days, that's the thing. That I was wondering what the downside of these is, and, and that's it. Like, how many militia could you make in three days? Probably more. Three. <laughs> more <laughs> than well, is, is it oh, militia. Good? Oh god. 
delicious, mm. like one every 45 minutes, isn't it? So, you have a, yeah. a little army of... Um, can make like 90. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, but but the second um, I upgrade the militia, it'll take longer. Because do you remember when we first started, um, some of the troops were just taking like an hour or two. And in fact, a lot of the stuff was just taking an hour or two. But now my infantry takes five hours. My try is 21. And then a lot of the planes were like um, a couple of hours, um, four hours. But now my attack bomber's 13 hours. So there's something to be said in pumping them out while they're they're quick to build and then upgrading them after because the upgrade takes about two hours so i've got some upgrading now um just not two hours 35 minutes and they're, they're upgraded for, for the attack bombers and that's stack of four but to make that stack of four it's like god knows that'd be like two days so there's some yeah. very interesting things going on in, in this game but yeah, it could take a very long time to build up an army, a good army. So it, it makes me feel a bit better about these massive players that are really far away. Because not only will it take them forever to get near us, but equally, how big is their army going to be? How quickly are they going to be able to produce stuff? And 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 equally, I know I'm asking a lot of questions and um, not necessarily waiting for you to answer them. But once we take over the whole of um, South um, America... We're going to have a lot of cities that can produce a lot of units. And so it might be that, I don't know, what are we going to end up with? Like 20 cities each or something? And each one could pump out a troop a day? Could, you know, that's a lot. It suddenly gets really strategic because then you think, well, which city is going to do what? Coastal cities have to do the boats. We've only got so many coastal cities. I feel like managing 20 cities would be a lot easier with a build queue. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not something I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can buy it mid-game or if if you if you should really. Because, um, I mean, I'd, I didn't really want it, I'd, I'd, but, but it is handy. I, I would say, though, um, because everything takes so long, I mean, a build queue gets pretty irrelevant late game um, from now onwards. Because if you have a look, it, it's taken me um, like 20 odd hours to produce each motorized infantry. And, and if I start producing them at a reasonable time of day, I'm, you know, just be able to pick it up in the morning or that day, just add them on, yeah. not losing yeah. too much time. But it's early game when they take like two hours sleep you, you know those troops you make there or start making because um, you can't always time it can you um, no finish when you no like for, <laughs> for every three troops you make i could make four if if i have the resources so yeah it definitely gives you an advantage um B but equally not a game n not necessarily a game ending advantage like just pumping out a load of gold for example and just instantly yeah. building a stack of 10 so it's a slight advantage which um you know I welcome but um yeah the more i think about this game the more strategy just becomes incredible just just what is coming and what we're going to be doing it's it's mind boggling really and um yeah i'm i'm really starting to get into it how are you finding it yeah just as i say like there's a, there's a lot of stuff to manage um so i can't i'm really focused on strategy right now so i'm just kind of flowing forward and taking land and hopefully once we've taken south america be able to take a look at everything and and organize my units a bit better yeah um yeah yeah, it'll change the game once we've taken South America because then we need to think, well, South America's our base. Where do we go from there? Whereas at the moment we're thinking, you know, where our units are on the front line or our base. But suddenly yeah. everything I, will I'm, change. I'm thinking like, well, we've got a lot of big players to the east. So we've already started pushing to the west. So maybe a, an incursion into Australia and New Zealand would be a good idea. 
Yeah, and I'm already leading the way. I'll I'll have all these little islands by then. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, we could do an Australia maybe. And so it looks like there's two people in Australia. Two different. Oh no, it's just Western Australia. They've taken it all, and um, Borneo are going through and getting the Philippines. Okay, so Bor Borneo is that player? Yeah, I'll have to see what happens. Well. It's been a great update. It really has. We'll see Tim next time, I think, then. And um, any last thoughts, Jonathan? No, no, not from me. Okay, well, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. Over and out.